Peter Ford and um, this is a little video that I'm making to explain why I spend a lot of time making these little animals out of cardboard boxes. It's not just because they're beautiful little animals but it's because a lot of Australia's small wildlife especially mammals, are disappearing and becoming extinct. In fact, many have become extinct already. Australia has the worst extinctions records on Earth. It's the worst country for extinctions, which is a bit of a bad um, record, I would think. So. I'd like to bring this to people's attention and the way I'm doing that in my own small way is to make some make these um, sculptures out of cardboard they're just made out of cardboard boxes that you might find that a shop might throw out I make them out of cardboard because um, the cardboard is made from standing and living trees and a lot of this cardboard actually comes from Australian forests. So we chop down our trees and have them chipped and they're sent to places like Japan or China. Um, we get very little for the chips and they come back to us as cardboard boxes. So I thought it fitting that I should make the animals out of cardboard. Many animals lead, need trees to um, survive. In fact, 90% of our birds and our mammals require hollow trees or hollow logs for them to reproduce. They need a nesting space and shelter. And um, that's where a lot of them go, into old, very old trees. And they must be old trees if they're young trees don't have hollows. So they've got to be over 200 years old. But over the last two centuries, we've chopped down most of these trees and there's almost none left, which means that a lot of the animals um, which require hollows have nowhere to go. Um, and so I'm trying to bring this to the attention of Australia. The other thing is that um, the fact that these animals are disappearing off the face of the earth um, and once they're gone, they're gone forever. It's part of a worldwide species extinction which is happening right across the globe. Now, in Australia, we've got a special suite of animals which um, evolved only here. So we're losing more because of the way we're treating the, our own countryside. We're losing more than most other countries. The United States of America hasn't lost anywhere near the amount of animals that Australia has, for instance. Even though we use similar farming practices. But I do wonder whether using the farming practices which are used in the United States, if we're copying them in this country, but it's having a really detrimental effect on our own country. We're not the United States. Our country is really a dry, ancient country and I just don't think that it suits our climate. It doesn't matter how good you are at uh, dry land farming, um, I think that it's degrading and it's not a sustainable method of, uh, of using our um, landscapes. So by making these small mammals I'm trying to show that they're not going to be around in the future. Many have already gone in there. And a lot of our other plants and birds have also disappeared. And we're not treating the Australia as a country in a very sustainable manner. Um, we've got to learn to live in a way which is a lot more sustainable and leave something for the generations who are to come which is one reason why I'm making these. 
Our children and many people who live on the seaboard, which is where most Australians live, know nothing about the animals that should be living here. These animals live right across the um, southern and right through, right across the desert landscapes of Australia before white settlement. They were part of our ecology. They used, um, they, they would find foods which were underneath the ground to sustain themselves. They weren't just grass eaters, as we may think of kangaroos. These animals eat um, both shrubbery and uh, grass, grasses and forbs. They also are omnivores in many cases. So they also eat subterranean um, animals and uh, microorganisms and also um, fungi, which is a, a, plays a huge part in our ecology, although it's unseen. Um, by digging the ground to get the fungi, which are like truffles at night time, they make little holes. And when they make these little holes, uh, we have a little cavity, millions of them, which collect um, leaf litter and seeds and where water clicks. And that's the way Australia would have worked. So that instead of the runoff that we get now, which is silting up all our rivers, um, in before white settlement, these things did the job of planting the new plants when a rain event happened. Talking about rain events, this is what Australia is. It's a land where we get a big flood of rain and then we can go for years without any rain at all in parts. We don't see that so much in, on the seaboard of Australia, but inland you don't have to go very far to see a huge difference in the climate. So the animals that we brought here are not animals which are suited to boom and bust cycles. Cattle and sheep require constant green grass to exist and access to water. So we've so pastoralists have um, made water points right across the country for their um, cattle to drink and their sheep to drink. But it also means that some of our native species, the larger ones particularly, like kangaroos, um, had pl proliferated right across the country and there we now have many, many more kangaroos than we should have. Luckily, kangaroos have got soft feet like these animals have and they don't do the damage that the hard-footed, hooved animals like sheep, cattle and goats do to the country. Sheep and cattle, uh, uh, the feet of these animals on dry ground powders the topsoil and when it's powdered in the summertime, it can easily just blow away in a big wind, which is what's happened repeatedly. So it's not any surprise that we have to put lots and lots of artificial nutrients into the soil to grow food. Whereas originally the first settlers that came here had no trouble um, with the soils that were here. Most of these animals now are um, behind wire fences, protective fences, and they're protecting them from introduced predators, particularly feral cats and foxes which um, feral cats and foxes take any of these animals which are under about five or six kilograms in weight um, so that we can't, if we take any of these animals which are behind fences and put them outside the fence, they don't last more than a couple of days. They're just eaten, um, which is a real pity. Behind the fence, the animals can easily outproduce, can can uh, reproduce so quickly because they're, used, they're boom bust animals. They know when the rain comes, this is the time to reproduce. And so they can have a lot of offspring in a short amount of time. And some of the 
Um, some of the places which look after these animals uh, get overrun with some of the so-called um, endangered animals inside the fence. So I hear you ask, what's all this to do with um, us living in cities and living sustainably? What have, what's all, all, what have all these little animals and what's all this about trees and things got to do with living sustainably? Well, to live sustainably means we have to leave something for the generations that come in the future. I'm trying to make a point that Australia is not America. America is a well-watered country. Europe is a well-watered country. It has high mountains and a, um, and a regular water supply. Australia is not like that at all. Australia is a boom-bust ecology. And yet we insist on buying our McDonald's hamburgers and, um, and our beefsteaks um, as if we're living in uh, on the Andes or on the prairies of North America. Beef cattle and sheep for that matter, um, if you run them on fragile soils then the result is a disaster and we're watching that disaster take place. It's, it, it's a, uh, it's all lot, it's like industrial farming the scale that we're working at in Australia. So that when times are good, the uh, landscape is just flooded with grazing animals. But when times are bad, all hell breaks loose. And um, people wonder why things have stopped. But that's always been, this is the way Australia's always been. It, it's, it has this boom bust cycle. And those hard footed animals of the Northern Hemisphere just don't belong here. So, to help live sustainably, I think that we have to think about just how much of those sorts of products we use on our daily lives. Um, there are other ways that we should be thinking about, rather than the uh, weekend barbecue on a regular basis. So, I hope that I brought some uh, thoughts to your mind about um, how just what changes each person in Australia should be making and um, I don't want to go into detail but I think that I can only leave that up to my viewers. Thanks for watching.